Bam, it says live. Let me see if I can get it we on. We are live. Try to get it on my iPad. All right. Uh, everybody in the Scotch world, this is Scott, Scotch Test Dummies, and... Bart, Scotch Test Dummies, and who is the guest? Bobby Childs. Thanks for having me. Boom, Adventures in Whiskey. <laughs> This is and fantastic. Um, just real quick, Bobby, you you just started video reviews on YouTube. You've got right. three or four, maybe five up. Yeah, just a handful. Um, maybe once a month. I said, well, you know, you guys are doing it twice a week. It should yeah. be easy. Yeah. No. Well, no. three three times now with this one. Three well, right, yeah. So no. Once once a month is my my goal. But you've hey, been thanks, thanks. you've been reviewing whiskeys and a whiskey blogger for some time, about three years. Um, I've had notes for a little bit longer, but for about three years, um, okay. it's fantastic. And it's because of you we have the barrel bourbon tonight. That's right. Yeah. So, so it's an interesting story. So um, I started getting uh, samples of nice size samples of barrel bourbon uh, back starting with batch five. Uh, batch six, batch seven, got their American, uh, whiskey batch two. And then they sent me batch eight. Oh, fantastic. So I put it up on the site and then I mistakenly got sent a uh, second bottle. Oh, that's so a I, good mistake. Yeah, good mistake. Great mistake. Yeah. So I reached out and said, Hey guys, I, you know, is this a mistake? Oh, no, just keep it, you know, share it. So first, <laughs> per, first guys I thought over you two and bam, yeah. there you go. Great. Great. Boom. Now, where, uh, you don't have to say the city, but where in general do you hail from? Uh, I am uh, born and bred Louisiana um, from Ooh. the New Orleans area. Uh, so, yeah, it's fantastic Perfect. down here. Yeah, awesome. You guys need to take a trip down south. Yes, we do. We've been talking about either 2017 or 2018 uh, doing some kind of maybe – Scotch Test Dummies Bourbon Trail Tour, where we could meet up with different folks that are able to hop in along the way and and hang out. What do you think of that, Bruno? Yeah. Well, I think it actually <laughs> in 2015 we talked about it, and then we kind of talked about it at the beginning of this year, and now now it's maybe 2017 is the goal. We're quick movers. <laughs> <laughs> we get an idea, we just we just execute, baby. It's like automatic move. Well, someone's okay. saying mic check. Can you guys hear us okay? Huh. Yeah, I saw that too. Mic check, audible art. What do I? Um, I'm, I'm picking up both of you guys fine. Yeah, I'm getting you guys. Li I can't get my live stream to kick up off on my iPad, however. Um, anyway, um, the, the barrel bourbon I was looking online, they just did, this is batch eight. Um, from what I understand, each batch is a little bit different. But looking online, really, they're pretty similar. This one was running, the mash bill is a 70% corn, 25% rye, and a 5% malted barley. So really, though, what made batch eight stand out is the age looking online. Uh, right. over, over nine years old. Most of the other batches have been four, five, six years old. Yeah, starting with, batch, I think, batch <clears throat> five and six for eight years old. Uh, I think batch six is, or batch five might have been eight and a half. I'm not sure. Uh, five was, and I got a bottle over here. Uh, five was, I'm sorry, batch seven was five years, and then nine here. So this is their oldest one they they've released, and I think there might have been their highest proof. I'm not sure. So, and it yeah, it is a 66.4 percent, also 132.8 proof. Otherwise, uh, AK known as a, uh, it'll put some hair on your chest. <laughs> I don't need that. Watch out. <laughs> I'm, I'm already Sasquatching over here with the Yeti. Well, and okay, now, um, Bobby, I think you've had this more than once. Uh, I've, I've had a few sips, yeah. A few um, sips. I just opened it today, um, so this afternoon I sat down just to take some notes before the show, but Bart, you haven't tasted this at all yet. That's right. Coming in totally blind. I just wanted that. Woo, what's going on here? So, yeah. Huh. Brett says it looks like a Costco bottle. 
<laughs> my little deal here. No, this one. Oh, yours over there. Gotcha. I do sort of like the minimalist uh, layaway. It, it kind of really lets you look at the color of the, the whiskey. Color's kind of the... The dummies are usually fan of a lot of paper wrapped around the bottles. <laughs> we we just, if they could take like layers of paper and just wrap it around the bottle and make it hard to grab onto, maybe just, I don't know, off the top of my head, add something that looks like a WWE belt. <laughs> if, if you can you, do that. You, you ask for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If you could add that into it, I wouldn't even care what the juice tastes like inside. I'd just like, look at this bottle. Look at it. Sorry. Now, yeah, there's uh, Velvet Elvis. Velvet Elvis. <laughs> now, Bart, I did have you in mind, though, because I've got, I've got my water in the wee Glen Cairn with the dropper. And I brought down some ice if I wanted to add just a little sonic cube of ice Ooh. or two in there. Wow, so you so could you could do like a sorry. drop of water, and then you could mm -hmm. add maybe another little drop. Yep, maybe one more drop, and no. then you could add in an ice cube. Don't forget, <laughs> I got the power to mute. <laughs> Velvet Elvis is in your control now, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll All right. tell you uh, this afternoon when I sat down with this, and uh, Bobby, you said how this would put some hair on your chest. Mm -hmm. At sixty six percent and neat. This was very drinkable. Mm. Extremely drinkable. I just went in and took a sip and didn't even get into any of my nosing notes. Yeah, I noticed that. You skipped way ahead. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm going anxious. neat here. Yeah, Me and too. I'm yeah. I'm neat as well. Now I'll tell you on the nose, uh a sweet corn came through to me, and I've got the oak. And I've got a question mark by this next one on the nose, and that's a sour mash. Yeah. There's um, a little bit of a, yeah, an acidity to it, yeah. And then just a little bit of the maltiness comes through in like a, uh, a fresh mown hay. Fresh mown hay. That is good. I, I was, was picking. Go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. Uh, I was, was going to say, I, I get a really kind of a, 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 like a burnt brown sugar, like a burnt, like a really dark brown sugar on this. Especially with a little air. I think that's where the sweetness comes from. Like a toasted grain. A uh, little, <laughs> little cinnamon. Hmm. Uh, D.H. Silve, too, pointed out. He, he caught on to your making fun of the Basil Haydens there, Bart. He said, he said, don't what? make fun of our families. <laughs> <laughs> what? I knew nothing about a, burlap sacks. He must be a descendant. He's one of them there descendants. <laughs> <laughs> I... I never said burlap sack, period. Now, on my nosing, it comes in a lot softer than I expected. You know, I, I figured not only would it put a hair on the chest, but strip it right out of my nose. It's not doing that. That's I really well made. Yeah, I haven't uh, added any water. And I kind of pick up, uh, you're right, that sour mash kind of is in there. And I can get... Uh, I don't know, a little bit of earthiness. My uh, grandparents had a, had a uh, corn farm out in Iowa, and it's almost like like even kind of the husk that would surround that corn. Mm. All right, I got to sip in. Yeah, go for it. Uh, Andrew Cup, he noticed that my ice was in the Norlands whiskey glass, and he said he just got his in. Do you guys like it? I know you guys talked about it a few uh, reviews ago, but how's it been since? I don't like it. <laughs> I I use it occasionally. <laughs> um, it's just you just it's one you know it's you're used to one thing, i.e. the Glen Cairn, and just going to something else is just different. Well, now, Bart, Bart, didn't you say it just felt like a, a cheap kind of plastic glass? And I did. I haven't tried one yet. Yeah, it looks gorgeous, and I think if we were staging, you know, one of our bottle photos or something, it looks great because of that kind of pyramid ninety degree shape you get. Um, but the way they the way they pull it inside out and then bring it around, it's got a uh, it's super light. It feels like almost like plastic, and it's and it's also light. It doesn't have any of the heft. 
And then mm -hmm. if you ring it, you know, if you, if you were to cheers the glass or bump it off of, uh, you know, or one of our glass droppers, you don't get that nice crystal ting. You get a little clank, clank, like it's, it's just got, because it's hollow, it, it, it well, looks yeah, Let me see if the, if the mic will pick it up here. Here's, here's our dropper and the Glen Cairn. If you hit it, is that picking up? Yes. Yep. And then with the uh, with the Norlands, but still, it's not bad. It's a little different. The other thing that's a little odd with it, and and I I'm still kind of up in the air. In and of itself, it has an odd mouth feel because it's turned inside out on itself right at the lip. The mm -hmm. lip of the glass is fatter. Uh, now, some of the good things of that is it sends that whiskey kind of out to the edges of your mouth a little bit better, but it felt like it was almost water falling over the top for me. Okay. So, and it, and so on that one, even the, the kind of the mouth feel of the glass seemed off. Now, I love the idea that I can get my nose in there, so I'm not banging my Glen Cairn on my nose. Right. But I can do the same thing. That's why I'll use this. I forget. Somebody told me it's more of a Canadian kind of Glen Cairn, that it's a little more open. Um, so, I mean, it looks great. And do I, you, I'm know, do you notice a, a difference when you're nosing? Like, do you pick up, is it more intense with one glass versus the other? You know, I haven't. No, I haven't noticed that much difference. So, I mean, it's got the little, like, almost like aerator edges in it. So as right. you gently swirl it, it's supposed to help, help open that up. Um, you know, but I don't, I haven't noticed much difference from a regular Glen Cairn. And you are right. The sip on this is, it's smooth, but yeah, it's, it's a hearty, it's a hearty, rich thickness to it. There's a nice, it starts out nice and spicy and sort of kind of ends in a really creamy kind of vanilla ice cream ways, I think, is the way I described it. Mm -hmm. I got um, right off the bat with it neat, just a chocolatey oak, a uh, creamy vanilla, a, a very rich, great velvety mouth coating. Um, I, I've got almost a wet wood, I think a wet wood which is some of that like sour mash it seems like and i don't know i looked on the website it doesn't say anything about it that could be a little bit of a sour mash in there sure uh i'm assuming um, i don't know now they do say aged for nine and a half years we had a comment wanting to know what the age statement was on it it is nine and a half years and they use a char number four american oak barrel mm. and batch batch five through eight have come from tennessee so some distillery in Tennessee. The rumor is George Dickel. I, I don't know. Oh, so the they sor sourcing the liquid basically. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the owner goes out and finds barrels that he finds interesting and blends them and batches them out. Each batch is a little bit different. Each batch. I was going to point out D H Silve. Uh, he commented that he has batch seven and it's the worst bourbon he's ever had. Oh. <laughs> See, I thought yeah. batch seven at five years. Uh, I saw five years to say, well, it's not going to be too complex. It'll be just kind of a fine little, you know, uh, just something to sip on, nothing too complex. And for five years, it's fantastic. Hmm. Um, it doesn't compare. It's not as complex as, you know, the previous batches or this, this new one, but it is something different. That's what they're aiming for. Hmm. Definitely. That's what I would like. Now, I mean, I, I have my favorites and, uh, batch seven didn't hit my favorites. But did or didn't did not did not still worth a try uh you know if you see it pick it up but if you see uh for batch five six or eight don't pass it up buy as many bottles as you can hmm. really now do you know what these uh i mean locally where you're at what are they retailing for do you know uh i've seen them uh in the 80 to 90 dollar range Okay. Um, so a little bit on the pricier side, but I can't hear you, Scott. Yeah, I know. You kind of went away, brother. Sorry. I wasn't paying attention. I was putting a drop of water in. I bet you got so excited he yanked his, uh, <laughs> his earbuds <laughs> right out. There you go. I'm hearing something on your ear. There end. it is. 
there. I'm gonna there. Have, maybe I got a short. You know what? I got a little mystical Velvet Elvis on you is what I did. I got a mute button. <laughs> <laughs> did he mute me? I think Art's hard. using some magic voodoo to get you uh, get you muted in your end. Did you mute me? Are you back? Yep, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> you can yell, yell and scream all you want. All right, you're back. <laughs> all right, I don't actually yell. My wife would come running down like, "What are you doing?" I haven't had to use the mute button for a while. I couldn't find it. I'm glad. You know, fine with a little bit of water. This uh, the sweet notes kind of really come out on this. I got now. I will point out that uh, the mash bill, and again, um, if you're just tuning in, seventy percent corn, twenty-five percent rye, and five percent malted barley. Huh. I, I was I was searching for the rye notes, and I can't. I mean, I, I'm not getting any. No, it, it just I I get more. Uh, I know rye is supposed to be sharp and a little bit spicy, but I get more like barrel spice than anything else. Maybe a little bit on the nose now. But uh, the taste wise in this afternoon when I sat down with it, I was getting, I haven't gotten any rye notes at all with it. Maybe a little, maybe a little spiciness, but not any of that dill or the rye coming out. Yeah, it's got a nice spark to it. But like you said, that's more of the, I think that's more of the proof that's sparking me than, than necessarily a rye. Now, with, with water, it brought out to me more the bourbon notes, more the cinnamon and the caramel, mm, right? the vanilla. And that sour mash still is, is, is there. Or, like I said, I don't know if that's, if that's what it is or not. I would assume that. I, mean, most, I know most bourbons are, use a sour mash. So, they, it, more ch chances likely it is. Okay, now, which is, because I'm a dummy, I actually don't know <laughs> the process of what the, the sour mash is. You know, I know some distilleries, you know, put it on the label, you know, right. big print, sour mash. And I know there's a lot of distilleries that use sour mash, but they don't necessarily say that, that they use it. Right. And sometimes it seems it's more a marketing thing than anything else. Yeah. Um, but basically, it's just use some of the, the spent mash and put it in as a kind of a starter, like you're, you're making sourdough bread. Yep. Uh, think of it that way. It's like you're carrying the yeast over. Uh -huh. And it helps with bacteria control and helps kind of keep the, the, the flavor consistency throughout. Um, Lewis had asked earlier if this was hard to find, and I, I haven't seen this in our area. Nope. Uh, I know their, uh, their distribution is a little bit limited. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, you have to check. I think their website may have where, they're, where they are, their Facebook or something. Um, uh, we just started getting it uh, a few months ago. Okay. Here in Louisiana. Um, now, and D.H. Silve, uh, he commented that there's only about 3,100 bottles available of the Batch wow. 8. That's awesome. So I was going to ask a, that earlier. That's a limited run. We shouldn't have opened this. We should have saved it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Scott's uh, a collector. I <laughs> yeah, I see. So, so is Bobby, Bart. So you're barking in the wind. Well, but I, I, I would imagine you opened some. I see back there. Where's your circus? Yeah, I see the circus. That was literally so hidden, is hidden back there. Yes. See? And he's got his circus. Have you opened your circus yet? No. Wow. Oh, boy. I'm on the outs here. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> it will be open. <laughs> All whiskey is made for drinking. Everyone will be open. That's, that's true. I, will, I would not say it will not be open. Mine will be open. It's just when... That's the question. All right. It's, now, it's, I, I, you know, as a, a whiskey blogger, I, I get so many samples of whiskey, not that I'm crying about it. I love it. Sure. But sure. sometimes, you know, you, want, you open a, a special bottle and you want it to, you want to kind of sip on it for a few days and, you know, you just want to wait for that right time. Sure. Yeah. Scott has this whole collector tendency, though. He will hold something. He's got some of the coolest giant FAO Schwartz Star Wars boxed figures that well, those he, those weren't that rare though. There's well, rare stuff. All right, there's rarer stuff. But he's got these Tomsmon things that if he ever passes out some night, I'm opening up and playing with them. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like a, credit though. He did open that uh, compass box circus a while back. Or the general? 
or wait. In general, yeah, you're right. In general, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, you're good. Yeah, he shocked me with that one. I was like, what? I kind of still wish I had that one sealed up. See, there you go. He's got he's got reservations. Oh, there you go, Dan. Daniel Willis noticed I've got the. Uh, this is not a luxury whiskey up there. Also, that has not been opened either. Now I know where there's. Um, Dave has another one of those on the shelf, over at Flint Hills. Wow. And if you don't want it, I'll be glad to take it off your hands. <laughs> wow. just, the list is so long. You know, we were shopping That's... like I, I told you. We were shopping yesterday. The they had the Akintosh in eighteen and twenty one year was on sale. Um, Lafroig 18 has showed back up in our area and one store had it for $89. Mm -hmm. No, wasn't it 98, 98, either one. Yeah. yeah. So the, the and the Lafroig triple wood that's on my list also. Um, Have you guys gotten the new Lafroig lore? We, we saw one more, we had one bottle and it slipped through our hands and we saw another bottle yesterday, but the price point really were kind of, Bart was maxing out his uh, funding yesterday. True. And I did buy the carches. They had the carches. Yeah. The Madeira cast carches. Yeah, I just reviewed right. that one uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's the maroon, the maroon can. Good stuff. Right. Yeah. Uh, you liked the, uh, the Ardbeg Dark Cove. Oh, yeah. I think you'll like Lafroy Glore. Really? You see it up there, Bart? Yeah, I see it, baby. I see it. You had a good now. You did well on that one. I've added a little water, and I'm gonna throw an ice cube in here. Here we go. Here goes small, the cube. A small Sonic ice cube. Wow, Sonic. What are yeah, you talking about? It. It's like, did they pay you for that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're dropping in Sonic ice cubes. Whoa, man! I did not do that. Wow. I got McDonald's ice cubes back here. <laughs> uh, Frank Frank Lampert has asked if this is available in Wichita. I, like I say, I haven't seen it around here, and I think we're kind of on the front end of a of a Pappy Van Winkle um, front here that's going. Hmm. If, if I mean, I think this stuff will be uh, as it gets out and about, and and people get to know it, it will be one of those releases that's that's uh coveted I mean it probably already is especially if there's only 3100 bottles of this I know uh, uh, a few uh, whiskey guys they weren't uh, they weren't too uh, they didn't like the the first few releases too much uh, but sort of starting with batch five I mean like everyone's joining uh, the the barrel bourbon love train it's it's been really good stuff since then I haven't I haven't tried batch one through four but if they're anything like batch five and eight, eh. oh. um, no point. D, uh, D. H. Silva said we need to start reviewing the compass boxes as well. Mm -hmm. But um, me and Bobby both have. If you look up there in, in the wooden box in the middle, it's probably the rarest one that I have, and that's a uh, Hedonism Maximus, which hey. was a 2007 release. Something Check your like that. Check There's your all mic, back. Scott. I think your mic's rubbing on your shirt. There's a lot of scratchiness. Oh, that was me scratching. I got the itch. <laughs> the uh, compass box itch. The STD. That's where it comes from. Yeah, there's some, was... there's some cream you can use for that. <laughs> yeah. I used to be a medic in the Army. There's a whole class on that. All right. All right. Let's try this one. I it had that other. Better. I had that other set because the cable was a little longer on it than this one. I was debating yeah. going wireless and using a big Bose headset, oh, yeah. but yeah, those are yeah. good. We okay. may go that way sooner or later. We'll see. So no, that sounds good, Bruno. I think that other one, the mic was rubbing your shirt. Oh, uh, anyway, yeah, the wooden one is Hedonism Maximus, which was a, a 2007 release. Um, they were they would they'll, they'll do these special releases to the hedonism if you've had in their core range they have the hedonism and then um for their was that the 15th anniversary the hedonism quindecimus or was right. that 10th was that 15? 15th 15 and so back in 2007 they had the hedonism maximus which is a blend of 
Uh, I don't, do they I say the age range? I heard, range I heard it could be somewhere in the 40 ish. 40, yeah, range. 40. Yeah. Eight. But there was I, only there's only 1,200 bottles of it. I just want to yell out Spartacus when you're talking like that. Yeah. Hedonism just, Maximus and Hedonism. Oh, Hedonism. yeah. So, yeah. so which one of those compass boxes is going to be your next uh, review? Well, I just got um, the sample bottles. Hmm. You know, Pete Monster and Asyla and Oak Cross. So, so we're probably going to go back and retouch on some of our first because didn't we do those in the first fifteen reviews? Oh yeah, yeah, several of them. We did Asyla was real early. Oak Cross. Mm -hmm. So Monster. we may touch on touch on that. Maybe in the midst of that, you'll do a shocker, a little surprise. Open one up. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm hoping for. I'm surprised. All right. Well, we've had this has been open now or in my glass for about 30 minutes. Hmm. I still, to me, I think that sour mash starts to come out a little bit more. <laughs> I like those it. Oak, those oak notes really uh, start to shine a little bit. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I get that brown yeah. sugar. To me, the nose is still a little bit elusive to me, but you're right. I'm I'm loving the flavor. It's good stuff. Mm. I gotta take the hat off. Ooh. Uh, Pradeep just oh. joined us. He yeah, says Pradeep. hello. Pradeep has been binge watching. Way to go, Pradeep. Yeah. Um, Andrew Cup, he says the Knob Creek small batch nine year is losing its age statement. Yeah, you know, so that just that just came out uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, Chuck Cattery uh, had a quote from uh, their master stiller, Fred No, that said they're losing their age statement. They're still going to be nine years for a while. Hmm. Um, but they're going to start blending at some point some younger and older whiskeys to maintain a consistent flavor profile. But he says the single barrel releases are still going to be nine years. Okay. I think that was what he thought was going to lose it. They're just going to take the age statement off, but they'll still be nine years. The, well, the, the standard release, the small batch is oh, going to be small batch. Okay. Yeah, the single, single the single batch. barrels are still nine years. What are you wooing, Bart? I just some new hair just came in right there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. good it uh, threw your hat off. It did, yeah. The hat came off. I was heating up, and boom! There's like a whole like uh, I don't know. There's like a whole Chuck Norris batch of hair just came in. <laughs> oh, that was something right there. That was good. It was nice and rich. It got me in the back that back under part of the, the tongue. Gave me a little bit of tartness. Mmm. Yeah. I'm digging the flavor. Yeah, it's a fantastic bourbon. Wow. How did, um, so Bobby, how did you get started or what made you decide to start? How long have you been drinking whiskey? Uh, since my college days. I was a Jack Daniels guy uh, forever. Uh, first Jack and Coke, then. Jack on the rocks, Jack a little bit of ice and less ice than Jack Mead. Uh, no one else in my circle of friends really was a whiskey guy. They, they more like chill vodka shots and that kind of thing. I was like, sure. nah, kill the shots. I'll just lay back with a little hmm. sip. And, uh, then I just kind of started branching out. Once I got into uh, uh, some whiskey, uh, I think Evan Williams Black was my first uh, real bourbon. Hmm. And uh, started to uh, branch out from there. Um, and the last three, four years is when I sort of got serious about it. And just decided one day, well, let me just start a blog. And you see behind you. I mean, yeah. I, I really love this stuff. I love tasting all these new whiskeys, uh, be it bourbon, be it scotch, be it, you know, Irish whiskey. American rye whiskey, Japanese whiskey. I mean, I love it all. Yeah. And I think that's been really the new trend is 
you know, there's uh, a whiskey drinker isn't just saying, hey, this is my brand, like how, you know, this this is all I, I used to be, is right. this. Yeah. And now it's like, hey, there's this world out there and I want to try this and this and this and oh, wow, they've got a new version of that, you know, and and I think that is huge. I mean, I mean, it's hard to keep up with, but it's phenomenal. Love it. Yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm reading press releases and I'm reading news sites and other blogs and I go to the store and there's 20 new bourbons every time I go there. I've, I've never heard any of these, these names before. So, I wow. mean, it's That's great. That's good for the bourbon industry, but I'm, I'm sort of afraid at some point this, this <laughs> bubble is going to burst. Yeah, but there's so many. You know, like I said, I mean, the only thing if the bubble bursts is there'll be some that'll, that we'll be able to buy cases of at a sure. very good price. So. But yeah, all the craft distillers coming up, the way the, you know, the way the beer was happening almost like back in the 90s, and there's just so many coming up. Right. You know, I hope we can feed into that for several more years to come just because I can imagine what we're going to get just in the States, you know. You know, Stranahan's wow. doing the single malt, you know. So, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Uh, so, you guys are Scotch mainly, and you just restarted uh, American whiskeys recently for your Wednesday uh, uh, episodes. Were you guys, that's, is that the way it started with Scotch, and then you guys moved into American whiskey? We did, and it was probably well. We okay. We're just coming up on our third year anniversary of doing the video reviews because we started in October of 2013, and yeah, when we first started, we just wanted to do scotches, and sure. um, we at first, we, you know, then we added in an Irish whiskey here, a Japanese whiskey here, an Indian whiskey. I think we had done one or two bourbons. Yeah, I got a <laughs> bottle of that up there too. Nice, but. You uh, did. You know, and then so that, and we'd done a couple of bourbons and we, and then, you know, well, here's, you know, Canadian whiskeys and all of these Let's let's start doing those on Wednesdays and we'll keep our scotches and our world whiskeys on Saturdays. So really that's, uh, that's how that came about. And it's probably been about a year now that we've been doing the bourbons on Wednesdays or the America's whiskeys, which could be a bourbon or a Canadian whiskey or an American whiskey. Yeah. Or rye. Now. Yeah. Rise. So. Um, is last that, year's uh, George Stack still your favorite bourbon? That um, probably yes. That I that I've had anyway. Yeah, I don't think anything's beat beaten it yet. Yeah, oh, that was a even, fantastic one. It was my favorite last year. It was good, but I don't even remember what did I say in the top five, Bruno. You mocked me because it was real pedestrian. Yeah, you like pick out like Jim Beam and <laughs> Buffalo Trace. And they're good. And, and, and they're, they're good picks. Nothing wrong with any of those. Yeah. No, no. But, I, you yeah. know, I'm picking out kind of the, the innovative, the new, You're right, you know, yeah. what, what really stood out and did this and that. Right. They only made had, 3.25 bottles of this and you got one of them. And yeah. He, yeah. This is phenomenal and you guys can't even try it. Yeah, and you're like Woodford <laughs> Reserve. Boom. Yeah, give me some good yeah. old Woodford. Three million bottles of it sold. Boom. Blends. They put a horse on top of there and they change them. <laughs> Love it. You know, uh, uh, we're talking about uh, the, the rarity of certain whiskeys. Um, we talk about how the the price our price uh, ceiling sort of increases. Mm -hmm. I remember when I started. You know, thirty dollars for Woodford Reserve. I mean, that's that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll I'll never spend more than that. Then Six months later, fifty dollars, yep. and then you know you buy a, a George Stag for a hundred dollars. Oh wow, well, that's I'll never spend more money than that. Then you know you're buying this for two hundred dollars next year, and this for three hundred dollars next year, and where does it stop? Yeah, I know it's a wonderful thing. It was funny. I was telling uh, Scott when we were in uh, the liquor store, we found some great sales that they hadn't even published, and I said, you know, one of the nice things is that we now know enough to know that that bottle right there is a must buy right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to get any cheaper than that right at this moment. Pull that off the shelf, buy two if they got two. <laughs> so my, yeah. uh, my wife, uh, this past uh, Mardi Gras, she was out with a few friends and uh, they heard a bottle snap or like oh. break, hit the ground. And one of, the, one of the guys said, Oh no, that was an expensive one. 
Oh. And uh, she said, well, well, what was it? And she, she doesn't really follow whiskey, but she kind of knows a little bit because, you know, I, I talk to her all the time about it, to her, much to her, to her chagrin. Uh, she, they said, oh, it's wood for reserve. She goes, that's not that expensive. Bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 A good, a good bottle, just not a fantastic thing. bottle. I like their double, uh, their double oak. See, I didn't like yeah. the double oak quite as much. Now, and I didn't, I didn't realize that someone on Twitter had asked us what we thought about the double oaked, and I, and I wasn't paying attention. I just thought double oaked, but it was a new. Uh, is it a cask strength double oaked, or it's, no? It's a single barrel double oaked that they have out now. Hmm. That I have, that I, I think haven't that, seen. That, that might be for uh, that might be a specific store pick. I'm not sure. Wow, was it? Because I think maybe I'm not sure. Hmm. I know uh, uh, one of the stores around here just got the. Their, their single barrel, uh, or I say single barrel, their store pick of uh, Woodford Reserve, but it's actually a blend of two barrels. They don't do single barrels in their traditional, uh, really, or there's traditional Woodford Reserve. I haven't tried I do have it, just yet. a cup, couple of comments on some first whiskeys that people were drinking, and we've had uh, Frank Lampard started with Balvini Doublewood, which is a good pick. <laughs> That's, That's a, a good great place spot. to start, yeah. Isn't it? Oh. Yeah. Uh, Canadian Mist, Aberfeldy 12. Oh, that was his second drink was Aberfeldy 12 from the Canadian Mist. That was a uh, Haw Speed Haw. And then um, somebody, well, let me see if I find it, Eric Gilbert. His, he started with Fireball. Oh, so he's a newcomer. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, hopefully, Eric, you've moved on. Yeah. To each their own, but mm, not for me. Eric, you need to get that Knob Creek Maple. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get that. I, Scott Scott got hey, one. I've got, I've, got, I've got a bottle of fireball upstairs, <laughs> matter of fact. It's oh, not back here behind boy. me on the shelf. Yeah, we so, have yeah. guys guys at the office saying, Have you tried this fireball yet? It tastes just like the candy. <laughs> Daniel Willis is asking if we try their Woodford Reserve rye. Have you guys had that? Nope. No, and we haven't. I haven't seen uh, it. I've been waiting basically, for it. Basically, and... Woodford Reserve. Think Woodford Reserve with just a, their rye notes, kind of just cranked up a little bit. It still sort of tastes like Woodford Reserve, just a bit spicier, and because yeah. Woodford Reserve already has a really high, uh, high rye mash bill. Love it. So, I think that's why I like it so much. It's 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 good. Mm -hmm. Um. Pradeep has asked about uh, chill filtered and non chill filtered and what the difference is. So what that is is a step in the distilling process uh, before they age it when it when they're done distilling the liquid and it's at a high proof before they put it into a cask they'll e they'll either chill filter it or they they don't when they chill f w w some people don't want it filtered because it leaves. Well, I, well, not chill. I, 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 the, the thought, the thought for filter, chill filtration chill. mainly is uh, people say, "Well, I don't want my whiskey to be cloudy when people drink it because uh, it chills the uh, it, it you know takes away all the fatty notes mm -hmm. that'll get a little cold, so, yeah, and visible and cloudy." But um, some people say it has a lot of flavor that they're they're taking yeah. out. Well, they strip yeah, out a yeah, lot of those oils. oils. The, yeah, the common belief is that chill filtering will remove some of the nuances of the whiskey. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it does. I think it, well, it doesn't give you a stick of a mouthfeel, because uh, I'll notice it'll seem to me some of them seem a little watered down when they're chill filtered. I actually agree with that one. I like if they're just filtered through, like when I was with Raj over in Pittsburgh the one time, he let me try, I think it was from the English Whiskey Company, and it had just had a pretty, like a, a, a metal straining filter. So there was still little pieces of charcoal that were even in there. And it definitely had a, a very different flavor to it. It seemed a lot, lot thicker, a lot, it filled, <laughs> that almost sounds wrong, but it filled, it was, it was a thicker mouthfeel. Sure. Um, Frank, I'm sorry, Frank, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Do any of you believe... You can taste the coloring in whiskey. No, I don't. But I mean, I know some folks say they can. God I bless can. them if they I can. Don't. I, I don't. Yeah. My, no, I, I don't like coloring in whiskey. But that's no. more from a cosmetic purposes. Keep it all natural. Right. I agree. I agree. I mean that. Uh, 
uh, I'll rookie mistake here. Uh, Scott has me over to the house says you got to try this compass box peat monster. I get over there. I look at the bottle. I'm like, look at this. Look how pale it is. It's young. It's da 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 da. He's like, try it. I mean, he's like, shut up. Elvis, Elvis already. And I, <laughs> I, I pour in, I sip it, and I'm like, oh my God. And he's like, right. And I was like, I, immediate convert. Don't, don't color it. I mean, I know if, if I ever hear anybody bitching about, oh, it's, you know, I just know they're, they're back at that stage that I was at. So, um, I mean, now, I know they want a rich you, color, but come on. And I won't. In our, in our, I'm doing our, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm probably going to say what you was just going to say. When, when we're reviewing stuff, we never comment on the color. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, unless, it's a, yeah. unless it's, you know, straight bourbon. Oh, I know yeah. no, there's nothing added to it. Right. Or if, right. It's, if I know it's right. completely uncolored, I'll, I'll mention something. But otherwise, it's, it's not important yeah. for me. Right. That can that can draw a fierce firestorm though too in the comments. Yes, something, yeah. something that is colored. What were you going to say, Bobby? Uh, the same thing Scott just said. Uh, I I don't touch on color if I know uh, there's color in it, I and mean, it's not important to me, um, unless it's a uh, you know really deeply colored straight bourbon. I know there's no color added to that, mm -hmm. um, or uh, something like Compass Box or uh, a few other Scotch makers. They don't they'll, they'll state they don't color their whiskey. Right. Um, I may comment on that, but otherwise, for me, color is just color. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. I'd prefer they don't, but, you know, it's not a big hang-up for me. Okay, now Scott is asking, we're going to move us right into the is it worth it segment. I uh, want to know if this is worth the price point on this bottle. Let's just call it $80. Is it worth it? Batch number eight of the barrel bourbon. I say yes. Yes. 100% yes. You bet got a lot of flavor it's real rich it's got an interesting nose i need to spend more time with the nose but but yeah this has got a real i don't know the flavors uh, got got some layers to it and when i like a whiskey it's because it does have those layers yeah i mean that's Let's what say you find it, it for instance yeah go ahead bobby um, I'm going to say that's i agree that's that's what makes a whiskey interesting is the uh, the complexity of a whiskey something you can sit down and sit for a, a half an hour, an hour, Bingo. and it would just, just start changing and evolving. Yeah. And I think well, this is and one at of first, them. I've come around on, on the bourbons, and at first, um, you know, I thought a lot of bourbons were the same. And I think you can get some of the same notes, but there really is. I'm finding – I love bourbons now. Um, I love scotches. I'd hate to pick one, but – the, the, with bourbons, there is still a lot of nuances. There's a lot of different characteristics and stuff to pick up. I mean, you do kind of have a standard, average, run-of-the-mill bourbon. Um, you know, we've done a couple, we've reviewed a couple of those, and there's one or two of them that's coming up. So, you know, I look for those ones that that grab your attention and they have that extra wow factor in there. So, uh, random question. Gun to your head, you had to pick one whiskey to drink the rest of your life. What would it be? Mm. Are you just one whiskey altogether just, or you one just bourbon? One. You have a lifetime supply of whatever whiskey, scotch, bourbon, Japanese whiskey, Irish whiskey. Brook, Lock, Brook Lottie, Port Charlotte, Scottish barley. Love it. The, the gray can. It's really pushing up. To be maybe my favorite. Okay, love it. When you when you when you first said that, and I've got this bourbon on my tongue, and and I thought bourbon's George Stag Jr. Um, a Scotch. If I was picking a, if I uh, overall though, I'd have to go with something sherried. Now, Bruno, um, you can, you got to rule out old granddad. No, that's not in. You got to leave that one out. <laughs> well, all right. You, I've, I've seen no the throw for Bruno. That's right. I've seen the future. You'll be drinking that old granddad when you're 80. I've seen it. Um, <laughs> well, Audible Art did point out the Willet two-year rye cask for the rest of his life, which I've had one sample of a Willet, which was the small batch, and it was pretty good. Um, Brett Atlas says Van Winkle getting, rye. Uh, I was going to say, we're getting some rare. rare. Booker's yeah, rye. We're getting, yeah. I was thinking more common general stuff that's more available. But. Oh, no. 
That's a great um, question, Bobby, because we've been thinking yeah. about having like a set of two or three questions that we'll end every live segment with, and I think that one's just made it in there. That's a great question. Bruno's been stumped. You can hear him yeah. breathing. He's breathing. I'll have to. I'll have to. Uh, on the fly, it. brother. Come on. Look, I, threw <laughs> out, I got down to what kind of, of, of barley I like, the Scottish over the Isla barley. Even the can color. Come okay, on. Well then I would just, I'll just throw out there then uh, Balvini 17-year double wood from what I've had. Wow. So Not the 21. Not the 21. No. Uh-uh. Mm. No. Double wood, cherry cask. Okay, yeah, that's true. That's true. 21 years, just the port cask, which is still good. It is. Hmm. And, and, well, there you go. All right. Well, I suppose we better uh, wrap it up. We're coming up. It's uh, 46 minutes now. So, hey, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We've been fluctuating on our viewers um, from anywhere from 17 to about 25. Mm. So, Oh, hey, before we leave, um, I couldn't find that comment to reference, but uh, I know someone, I can't even remember who you told me, asked what was the book that we were reading the Gaelic out of for some of our that was uh, That was Gakon, I think. All right, so whiskey. Yeah, I think that's how he said. I think that's how he said to pronounce it as as well was Gakon. All right, that was out of uh, Whiskey Classified by uh, David Wishart. So Whiskey Classified, great, great Scotch book. And for those that haven't, don't forget that uh, we're doing the giveaway of the uh, Deveron pack. It's got a Glen Cairn in it. It's got a watch in it. It's got some other cool stuff. It's kind of an empty bottle. There is no actual whiskey in there. But uh, we're giving that away. So you got to go to our uh, go to scotchtestdummies.com, uh, go to the contact page and uh, email us. And you've got to also give us um, or you got to subscribe to the channel. So do that and uh, you can be entered to win. And we're going to do the drawing on October 1st. So hurry up. Well said. Do you guys want to give this a rating? Ooh. Um, nine as a as a first sip I'm, rating since since Bart's tasting it for the first time. I'm going to say ninety on my end. Ninety one. I do a ten point scale. I think I'd give it somewhere between a eight and a half or eight point five and a nine. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fantastic. fantastic. It, it, it's one that def, that definitely brings something to the table than just your standard average bourbon. There's a lot more to it. So, I mean, that's what I want. That's what I want to see is something different. Right. Right. In a good that's way. A good thing about, that's like a good that. thing about barrels. Uh, every batch is just a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, Scott Page wants to know about a giveaway tonight. Sorry, Scott. No giveaway tonight. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we run ours the whole month, baby. You get to hear it over and over again. <laughs> hey, th uh, thanks, thanks again to everybody tuning in, and um, thanks, Bobby. Bart, you gonna sign off? Thanks, thanks so Bobby, for, for joining me. us. So I appreciate it. All right, and Scotch. Stay on the, oh, sorry. Go, go, go. No, I was gonna say, stay on the line here, Bobby. I'll, we're gonna we'll keep talking here. All go, right, Bart. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. Salon, Dummies. Dummies.